Welcome, Raymond and House Rock Wildlife Area Bison Hunters. This presentation, we're going to go over some differences that are taking place this year, starting this year, uh, on the hunts on the wildlife area. And we'll hope that uh, so you guys are prepared and at the changes that are going to be occurring this year. So we put this together. We've done this for bison hunters on the North Kaibab on a hunter clinic for oh at least five years now. But uh, we thought with the changes that would be good to introduce you guys so you know what to prepare for and what to expect on these new hunts. Before we get going, I want to uh, highlight this hide. That is, uh, this is a bull bison hide. This hide that we had uh, an artist uh, create for us telling a story of, of bison and um, the plain Indian culture of the Midwest uh, told stories and history on bison hides. So we have a similar idea to tell a story of bison uh, in North America. And we'll get back to this at the end of the slide presentation. I'll go over exactly what it is telling here. So this is the agenda we're going to go over. Um, part one is just going to be the background and what's uh, new, the background of each wildlife area and um, the legalities of the hunting. And then some uh, bison age and sex identification, scouting, hunting, and then after harvest care. Here's the department of staff. I am Carl Lutch, the Trustor Wildlife Program Manager at a Flagstaff. Been managing the bison for about the last 11 years now on uh, both House Rock, Raymond, and on the North Kaibab, and adjusting to uh, what the bison do and how they react to, to the hunts. Also, you'll be hearing from Alan Zufelt, um, and then Sam Pogue is the House Rock Wildlife Area Manager, and then Kenny Hott is the Raymond Wildlife Area Manager. You can um, use these phone numbers to contact both those guys um, to coordinate with your hunts and let them know when you're going to be coming. Also, you can send questions right here to uh, Bison Hunt at AZGFD. And this will go to um, all of us and we'll answer any questions that, that any of you have. But easier to have the, the one um, email address than uh, each individual one. All right, so what is the difference? What is a buffalo versus a bison? What is that difference? Well, the true buffalo are found only in Africa and Asia. Many people call them our animals here in uh, North America, buffalo. But truly, they are um, bison. And the Cape and Water buffalo are the true buffalo of the world. So buffalo and bison are in the same family, though, bovidae but they are distinct and separate species. American bison consist of both the plains and wood bison. Wood bison are up in uh, about halfway the provinces of Canada and Alaska is their range. So the northern part of North America and then the plains bison are south of them to northern Mexico. Okay, they are only found in North America and the name buffalo is believed to have come from uh, the Mer early American settlers word for buff leather, where that derived from. Plains bison are native to Arizona, but they were not abundant at any time that um, at least archeologists can uncover, and they were not present during the settlement period in the 1800s. All right, so here's uh, the bison range. Here's you got the House Rock Wildlife Area and Raymond Wildlife Area, where they are in the state, in case you are unfamiliar with them. So Raymond Wildlife Area is about 20 miles east of Flagstaff on I-40. It's an exit 225 on I-40. That's the Buffalo Range Road. And it's about 10 miles south of there. And just follow the signs. House Rock Wildlife Area is a little more remote. It's about a three-hour drive north of Flagstaff off Highway 89A. You just go as you would to the North Kaiba of Jacob Lake. And a mile post 559.8, you turn south on BLM Road 8910. It's about 20 miles south of uh, Highway 89A. And just follow the signs. And you'll um, come across the wildlife area signs when you come onto the House Rock Wildlife Area. And then where the headquarters are is a few miles south of that. And uh, there'll be signs pointing you to the headquarters. It's about two miles off of the 
um, 8910 Road on the Forest Road 632 to headquarters. And here's a depiction of, of that. Uh, here's a Highway 89A, uh, that mile post. 8910 Road comes down about in here, about the middle of this BLM property down the House Rock Wildlife area, right in here. Headquarters is gonna sit right about there where my pointer is. All right, so a little bit of a history and background, Raymond Wildlife Area, as I said, it's located 20 miles east of Flagstaff. It's less than 15,000 acres. It is fenced as it's surrounded by private cattle ranches. It is a mixture of mostly uh, rolling mixed grassland with a little bit of pinion juniper on the west side. The original uh, bison were released from House Rock Wildlife Area in 1945. And up to 1972, the bison were hunted in crowds. Uh, many of you probably have heard those stories in the past. Um, and I've got some pictures here that show that uh, old hunt coming up. But what that led to was this. The, the, the hunting of those bison in the crowds um, was a book and a movie in the 1970s called Bless the Beast and the Children. And because of that and the protest that came about from the way the department harvested the bison back then, um, there were the first, uh, probably the first, if not the first public protest of hunting in the country. And because of that, the department changed the ways. Um, those protests happened out at Raymond Wildlife Ferry on the road. Um, after that, the department at Raymond, um, uh, from 72 uh, to, to today, to 1920 anyway, I mean 2020, the department guided the hunters on, on those, on Raymond Wildlife Area. And in 2017, uh, uh, the department replaced those animals um, that were released from the House Rock Wildlife Area. And we replaced them with bison um, from Wind Cave National Park. And that was 46 bison that started that founder herd in, in 2017. Okay, so the, this picture here on the right was a picture of those uh, hunts in the crowds. You see the bison being herded here by a guy on horseback in front of a hunter. Um, wasn't much of a sporting um, opportunity, and uh, rightly so, the department has changed that. So this agreement with Wind Cave National Park was the first agreement between National Park Service and a state wildlife agency to jointly manage a bison herd of high genetic value and integrity forming the new Raymond Bison Conservation Herd. So in 2021, the new hunt strategy is gonna be implemented, which brings us to why we're doing this presentation. So let's go up to House Rock uh, Wildlife Area, the background there. Um, these animals came in uh, 1906 by a gentleman named Charles Buffalo Jones. He brought them to the North Kaibab and with the intent of crossing them with Galloway cattle to form a hybrid. In December 1927, the first state bison hunt was in House Rock Valley. Um, the department had bought, actually it was the state of Arizona, had purchased 97 animals from an um, uh, individual named uh, Jimmy Owens. Um, and Owens had picked about 15 to 20 of those animals that uh, Buffalo Jones had brought in that he thought were pure breed buffalo bison. And um, he kept those and Jones rounded up the rest of them and shipped them out of state. And in 1950, House Rock Wildlife Ferry was officially established for bison. Then up to 1972, bison were hunted on the open range or in the House Rock um, area headquarter corrals, much like they were at Raymond Wildlife Area. 1982, um, the department opened uh, public hunts or implemented on House Rock Wildlife Area. And some of you probably remember those days of um, hunting down there on the wildlife area itself. The result of those hunts though, was that about the mid uh, 1990s, the bison first started showing up on Grand Canyon National Park. 
2009 was the last year these original herd had returned to House Rock Wildlife Area. And now it's been almost exclusively, uh, probably about 90, 90, 95% of their time on Grand Canyon National Park. December 2017, another had uh, transplant had taken place. Uh, our 15 new yearling bison were released on House Rock Wildlife Area from American Prairie Reserve in Montana. Then again, also in, in this year, 2021, this new hunt strategy is gonna be implemented on the, both the wildlife areas. These 15 uh, animals that were released on House Rock Wildlife Area for you hunters that will be there are of high quality animals, um, also of no known um, cattle genetics within them. So new wildlife area hunt strategy. So you heard me talk about that, so what is it? All right, starting this year, hunters are allowed to hunt in the designated areas of each wildlife area on their own. Or if you prefer, um, the department will go along with you to help just as we have in the past. But your preference, whichever way you want it to go. Um, there is a, a mandatory hunter meeting the first morning of each hunt at the wildlife area headquarters, similar to the past hunts. And we'll do that at 7 a.m. After that, you'll be on your own. Off-road uh, vehicle retrieval is allowed on both wildlife areas, uh, but no off-road travel prior to a harvest. And then as just a special note on Raymond Wildlife Area, at least currently, probably will be for the next five years, no ATVs or UTVs are allowed on Raymond Wildlife Area, but you can drive a, a vehicle pickup um, pretty much anywhere in the wildlife area if, after a harvest to, to retrieve that animal. So what if you wound an animal and it moves from the designated area of these uh, on the wildlife area? What do you do next? Okay, well, just contact the department. There'll be an employee there at the headquarters or out in the field and just find them and um, they'll assist you. Um, hopefully that's not gonna be an issue. These animals don't cross fences very well, but they will if they're driven. Um, and pursued hard, um, but typically on their own, they don't cross these fences. Um, so, and we'll go over those areas where it might be uh, on a map here shortly. So what are the legal requirements since you'll be on your own? Uh, what must be removed from the field after a harvest of bison? So both species and sex need to be identifiable and that is to your, your either your house or to your meat processor for identification. So from a designated bull bison only hunt, uh, only a bull, these hunts uh, will be in spring hunts right now. We're, we're the, the spring um, time period is what we're anticipating. So proof of sex, either the head or genitalia attached to a patch of hide or pictures um, of either with you. Just in case you don't want to bring the whole animal out of field is why we've shown you the, the minimum requirements. So same for a designated cow bison only permit, only a cow from the designated area on the wildlife area. Um, just as a note, um, just to go over that, the whole of the wildlife areas will not be open to you. These animals uh, will, the, the main herd cow calf group will be protected in an area outside of the designated area. These animals are not um, used to hunt, so they are naive, but they're, and we'll go over that in a little bit here on just what the do's and don'ts um, to be successful. So again, uh, proof of sex on a cow hunt, either the head, the udder, or genitalia attached to a pet, patch of hide or pictures of either with you and the same for a yearling hunt. Uh, only a yearling is legal from the designated area, and these will be yearling bulls. Um, cows will be allowed, the yearling cows will grow out and be harvested as cows at a later date. Proof of sex, again, the genitalia, a patch of hide, or pictures um, of either with you. And where this come about, there has been individuals um, in the past that didn't want the hide, didn't want the head, they just wanted the meat, and they wanted to leave it in the field. Well, in transport to either your house, your home, or to a meat processor, you have to have the uh, evidence of legality of what that animal is. So that's the minimum requirements that you need. But most, most people will have the head with them. 
All right, so there is a checkout requirement still on all bison hunts. It is required. It is mandatory, so each hunter shall uh, mandatory checkout whether you're successful or unsuccessful or do not even hunt. Um, you go online, click the hunting tab in the upper left, and then click on the harvest reporting, which is the second row first icon, and scroll down the bison. Or the um, department representative at the wildlife areas uh, will probably be able to do that um, also. There is a mandatory physical checkout to collect biological information from the harvest animals. We just want to check which animals are harvested um, so we know, um, keep the running total of, of um, which animals we have still. All right, on the North Kaibab, we do collect blood samples um, for brucellosis testing. We do not need that on uh, the wildlife area hunt, so no need to collect uh, any blood for us. So how, much, uh, how many bison are on each wildlife area? So on Raymond, right now there's a 78. And you can see the, the breakdown of that. Um, those original 46, we've been harvesting animals there for the last couple of years. Um, 78 with the 17 calves this year. This year, I think we're harvesting 15, 13, 15 animals off of there. And on House Rock right now, that 15 animals has grown out to 36. We've harvested two bulls from this new herd. And you can see the breakout of there also. So both herds are still growing out. Um, was some concern, had green up, or very little green up in the last three years. But now with the summer monsoons, been great summer. Um, wildlife, both wildlife areas are greened up. These animals should be in good shape and, and put on some fat uh, prior to harvest. Um, this year. So next we're going to have Alan Zufelt come and talk. He's going to go over age and sex identification. Um, you will have to know that uh, on your own and you'll still be required uh, that requirement to identify, correctly identify um, the, the sex and age of um, what your tag is for. So next to Alan. Uh, my name's Alan Zufelt, the game specialist in uh, Region 2. And uh, you know, moving forward to this presentation about the age and sex identification for your bison, this is probably the most important thing to get right in the field. Um, you know, you've spent the money, you've spent the time, you've finally got drawn, and you need to harvest a legal animal um, to... Uh, be able to keep it and uh, so we're going to help you with that the best that we can with this um, bison males and females bulls and cows yearlings look different from each other uh, but to an untrained eye maybe not as different as all that especially when they're in a group so we're going to help you kind of see the different characteristics of the different ages and uh, types so that you can have a successful uh, event so the diff some of the different things between the bulls and the cows and the yearlings on this picture right here before it gets covered up with words you can see a uh, a younger bull probably a three-year-old bull um, large based horns tall goal post kind of almost hor uh, vertical um, horns versus a younger cow on the right side of the screen there you can see much smaller horns and uh, more of an arcing uh, um, horn shape the look at how much the facial hair is on this uh, bull on the left and the that afro kind of thing that's going on as opposed to the 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 less furry hair of the uh, of the cow and then also just the the mass of the head and how the cow has that long narrow face versus the bull uh, I just wanted to point that out before we put the words on the screen while well, you can still see them here um, if a uh, uh, on a bull if you're looking at it from a broadside angle an adult bull you should be able to see that penile sheath um, under the belly right there for a yearling bull it may or may not be visible or maybe very small um, uh, obviously on a female you should not see a penile sheath so um, already mentioned a little bit about the horns there you can you can clearly see that cow's horn will not get any bigger around it will just continue that uh, mass farther as she gets older um, the bull horn is much more massive and just continues to build 
as he gets older and older. Um, and uh, the shape of those horns. Uh, female cow horns are typically coming up in a, a sort of almost a round uh, profile where the, the horns of the bull are typically that much more goalpost straight up uh, kind of a, a horn. Uh, where that might change most would be in some of the older bulls where that will actually start to look a little rounded as well but it is very clearly different between the bulls and the and the cows. Uh, on a yearling bull a horn will look like an ice cream cone stuck on the side of his head. Uh, where the uh, yearling cow it also it already has that little bit of arc and turn in it and there'll be some pictures to show that a little better as we're coming through. Um, talked about the size of the head you know you can clearly see even through all the words here the 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 size of the head difference and just how narrow the face is of that cow versus the bull um, the extra hair uh, and then just the smaller body the reason you know if you look at a, a cow versus a bull the bull has a much larger hump than the cow and, and that is all the muscle that's being used to hold the big massive head up and so if you have, uh, if you can see that big hump, you can be pretty sure that it's a bull. Um, but, you know, look at all of the identifiers. Don't just look at one thing. Younger bulls haven't had the time to build that heavy muscle yet. So they may look more like a cow, even though they're still a bull. So you, you have to pay attention to everything. Um, oh, yeah, the, uh, the neck. On a cow you can clearly see a body, a neck, and a head. On an adult bull, you will not. It's just those shoulders straight up to the, to the head. Whatever neck there is is covered with so much hair that you won't be able to notice it separately from the, from the animal. Okay, so uh, um, calves are born earlier in the year before this fall hunt. And uh, as you're looking at this picture here, you can see uh, a young calf there to the left side of the picture, the, uh, that sort of orangish color. Um, depending on what time of year that you're out there, that, that calf will be that color or it'll be turning more into the standard bison color. And, and this picture is going to give you a pretty good representation of these different things that we were talking about on the last slide. So starting on the far left, you know, the, the, that one that's kind of cut in half there, uh, that's a cow. And you can see just the one horn there, how rounded that horn is compared to that younger bull that is behind her uh, in that top left part of the picture there. You can see the heavy base and that goalpost uh, um, style of horn. You can see the, the, the penile sheath hanging down there. Um, so just as a comparison though, that young bull will be the one that uh, you would most likely confuse with the cow because he isn't um, so old to have that massive hump or anything, but you can still see the lot of the wool, the heavy horns and, and the penis there. So moving uh, to the next, so this would be the sort of the one to the left of the middle of the picture here. Uh, you have a, a yearling cow in behind this adult cow. Um, you can clearly see the difference in the size of the horns between the, those two. Now if you have a cow tag, um, you obviously you're going to be wanting to try to shoot a, an adult cow. Um, this would not be a great shot to take because one, the animal's in the wrong orientation and, and two, it's got something behind it. So if you look over her back, uh, there are two more young bulls on the top right of the of the screen there and you can just see that from their horns and the hump that's developed up there. Um, but, but this is going to be the kind of thing you're having to look through while you are uh, on your hunt. Um, so specifically to the cows, when they are sideways uh, to you broadside, you will not see a penis. There will be no penile sheath. There's no junk. <laughs> um, the horns, when they face you, are very thin at the base relatively relative to the uh, bulls. Um, that curve we've talked about is, is more, very much more rounded. The narrow face 
and, and less woolly than the adult males are going to be. So here's what we're talking about right here. The, uh, oh, I just handed a thing. I can show people things. I didn't realize I can use the mouse to point. Thank you, Ben. So, so here, here uh, we can see right here these, these curved horns and these small base. You know, this is, this is definitely an adult cow. Um, this long face coming here, the afro is not overly large. You know, it's very small relative to a bull. Um, so this would be obviously an adult cow. Um, you can look over here. This, uh, this one on the left, this is also an adult cow. The long face, she's sticking her tongue out at you. Um, she's got these... Uh, uh, lesser horns and down here there's no penile sheath available or to be seen on her right here um, this animal right here is also a cow you know more from the the broadside picture of that you can really in the horns that lesser horn she's a little hairy but not nearly so hairy with the afro as the uh, uh, um, other ones so <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, so very, very much less woolly than an adult would be. So, um, so these are cows. Now, you can see that there are other bison in the background here. I believe one of them is likely a bull, but uh, we can't see enough of them to be able to know for sure. So, you are responsible for what you are uh, shooting, so make sure that you shoot the right thing. Um, we've already talked about these, these different indicators on, on the bull. Um, the, the words are unfortunately on top of this, but you can see the penile sheath down here on this adult bull. Um, the horns are much heavier, and you can see that the, uh, the woolly hair is kind of overrunning even the base of the horn here. Um, the goalpost uh, uh, horns, and then that very much larger broad, uh, broad head. So uh, this is a younger bull here, but you can already see those characteristics. A lot more of the wool, the goalpost goal style horns with the heavy base and, and the mass being brought out there. Um, this is probably a three-year-old bull here, so um, two to three. Um, but you see the face is somewhat triangular versus the long, narrow, sort of boxy, rectangular face of a, of a cow. Um, yeah, so side by, oh, there we go, side by side comparison, the rounded horns um, still has somewhat of the wool, but not the same as the bulls. When you get them side by side, you can really see the difference. Um, both the bulls and the cows have a goatee here, but the bulls are typically more pronounced, but that is not something I would base my shot on. Uh, I would look at the other identifiers. So, Okay, this is a large adult bull here, and you can see He's got so big that that horn has kind of uh, turned in almost uh, in that rounded the similar shape to the cow. Uh, so this is possible, but clearly the massive hump, the incredible amount of wool and uh, just the, the mass of the, of the size of the head is very obvious. Uh, you will not uh, ha have any likelihood of mistaking any, a large older adult bull for a, a cow. Uh, just from the the massive size of them, even with the uh, the different shape of the horn of this particular bull. Um, but yeah, make sure you get it right. So here's what a yearling bull looks like. Um, the yearling bulls are uh, sort of the uh, outliers of the herd. They, they they don't fit in, so sometimes they would be more independent and show up at a water hole by themselves even. They may have been ostracized or the, the least one that they care about. The penile sheath is there, but it's very little on this little guy. Hard to tell. Um, much better to look at the, goal, or the, uh, 
the shape of these horns, how the uh, ice cream cone on the head and the hair, this animal would be legal for harvest as a yearling. Um, yearling cows, I don't think we have a picture of them side by side, but you can see, I'll, I'll go, I'll try to go back to the last one. Look at the horn shape of this one. They already have some curve in it. It's a smaller based horn versus this guy. It's a little straighter and, and bigger diameter at the base. So you can kind of see the difference. Either one of these would be legal for a yearling harvest. Um, but even here, you can see the difference in the head shape between the, the long rectangular face versus the more of a, a pyramidal triangular shaped head. And the, the woolly head is more prominent on the yearling bull than it is on the yearling cow. Hey, Alan, just to add to that, that these animals are legal for a cow only as a cow or a bull also, not just a, a yearling cow. Yes, cat. that's, I'm sorry, I, I might have misled people there, but yeah, yeah, so if you have a cow tag, you can shoot a yearling cow. Uh, if you have a yearling tag, you can shoot a yearling cow or a yearling bull. And if you have a bull tag, you can shoot a adult bull or a yearling bull. So, um, here they, I guess we did have one side by side. This uh, bull here is a, still a yearling bull, but he is already a full year old. You can see how much that horn has grown um, before from that last one. Again, versus this yearling cow, you can see the difference. They really start taking off by the, the spring of the year after they were, were born. Um, and just you can see those differences in the uh, in the wool and the head shape and the horn shape. It's uh, once you get to looking for those differences, it's pretty obvious. Um, but don't shoot. You are strictly liable for what you shoot. You shouldn't. You have to know what you're shooting at. So if you have a question in your heart, don't pull the trigger until you figure it out. Um, here's a, a picture again of the adult bull you can see how massive the horn is how massive the the hump is the woolly hair um, and these uh, two that are in front of him on the left right here and here these are, are that same year's calves this will probably be what the, the calves will look like when you're up there hunting uh, this fall it will be something of this or even into the spring because the, the extra hair they have uh, to the back here, you've got uh, a yearling bull for sure here and maybe right there, but you can't tell by just one thing. Make sure you're taking a good look at things on the whole, not just on the parts, um, to make sure of what your shot is. Uh, here's a, a, just a piece of reference, you know, a, a sketch showing these different age classes and sizes, especially with the bulls, um, showing what their horn shape basically typically would look like um, and you can see the cow the mature cow how much narrower it's drawn it's because it's that much narrower and this really a good representation of what that looks like um, aging bison it, at least through where they're about five years old it's really pretty easy to look at a bison you just have to get them to smile the uh, the yearlings they will have uh, they only have lower incisors on the front of their jaw so if you pull their lip down and you can look at their teeth if they only have baby teeth um, then it's a yearling um, and then as they start getting older just like your kids they start losing those baby teeth and growing in adult teeth and there's a huge difference in the size between those teeth and so uh, as this picture is demonstrating you know um, when they have both of their middle incisors, that's a two-year-old. When they have um, two of the four middle incisors on each side, so a total of four adult incisors, they're going to be three years old, and uh, so on. Well, I'm having trouble with that thing there. So once they get to be fully adult teeth, then that's a five-plus-year-old animal, and it really gets much harder to determine the age, so it's just going to be you know five or older at that point. Um, you, you know, other things that they would look at would be, you know, how much wear on the back teeth and stuff, but beyond the tooth eruption, it's just a guess as to how old the animal is. Um, 
Are we collecting teeth? No. So um, there are some other opportunities, some other places to go to look for uh, some more of this. Uh, Wyoming has put together some things. Utah has put together some presentations that are online and kind of have a practice quiz going through things. Um, it, I've said it a couple times. You, you need to make sure that you do it, that you actually harvest the animal you intend to harvest. Um, that is your once in a lifetime take, whether or not you can keep the animal. So make sure you shoot one you can keep. Um, and uh, then also come uh, come out and enjoy uh, the Raymond Wildlife Area. You have a uh, we have a bison herd that you'll be able to look at and be able to see these differences in person and start to understand really what we're talking about there. Um, if you have the chance to scout at uh, the, up on the North Rim of the Grand Canyon, then for sure take some time to check out uh, the bison up there. Um, hey, hey, Alan, yes. I'll just add, um, Kenny Hot is our Raymond Wildlife Area Manager. If anybody wants to contact him to come out to look at the Raymond herd, Kenny can be reached at 928-699-5200. Again, that's 928-699-5273. So, and uh, yeah, Kenny is a great resource there at Raymond, and Raymond, he can tell you where to go look and uh, um, help facilitate you having a good visit out there and, and doing what you need to do. So um, here we have, just gonna go through like a couple of extra slides here. Yeah, this is a mature cow, but you can see uh, perhaps this horn got broken a little bit, so it's not quite so obvious. Um, but this is not a good shot to take, although it would be a perfect uh, shooting opportunity if it was not for this little calf that's right behind her. You can just see the feet hanging down from out of her. Um, you need to pay a lot of attention to that. The bullets will pass all the way through uh, a bison sometimes. And, uh, and you'd be responsible for, that, for those second animals that are shot. Um, so, you know, you've got time typically, especially uh, on the uh, Kaibab hunts where uh, the herd will come in and be drinking, moving around. There will be time for you to take your time to make a good shot. Um, so, you know, and that cow would be legal if that calf was not behind her. Um, you could harvest her even with a young calf. The calves will be fine. We purposefully set our seasons to where the calves won't be uh, impacted by uh, if their mother gets shot. Um, so that's another identifier. If they have a calf, you know they're a cow. Um, but there will also be cows without calves. So that's another way to, um, you know, if you're concerned about a calf, uh, surviving after harvest of a, of, of a mother, um, there will be dry cows up there without calves too, so look for those. Yeah. So, uh, so this is uh, up on the North Kaibab, and you can see what a herd of bison looks like, and uh, how in the shadows, with all mixed up on top of each other, and they were always going to be kind of moving around, it makes it, uh, uh, it can be a challenge to find that time. And that's where you need to take the time to make sure you have the good shot at the animal that you think you're shooting at um, that's not stacked up with another one in the way. Identify legal animals, take your time, and wait for one to clear. And so with that, that is the end of uh, the age and uh, gender presentation. All right, thanks, Alan. Um, we're going to go over um, hunting on the wildlife areas now. So just a little note uh, how unique and rare uh, bison hunting is in North America. There's only a few states that allow it. On, um, and Arizona was one of them, Utah, Alaska, and a little bit in Wyoming are really the only ones a little bit around um in montana i guess around yellowstone national park um but it is unique and rare so enjoy it um make it an adventure it is unique and um uh, you'll, you'll enjoy the, the 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 bison meat is is 
is um, some of the best game meat that I've ever had. So how to prepare, what to, what to prepare and what to expect. So just like any hunt, um, you would go on, bring enough food and water for the whole hunt. We anticipate uh, most hunters will be done the first day of the hunt, but you have five days um, in each season and um, just be prepared for it, just as you would going on a deer or an elk hunt. Ensure you have adequate fuel and spare tires. November and December, I mean uh, November to February can be cold, so be prepared for snow, rain, sun, and fog. Cell service can be spotty, but it's better at Raymond Wildlife Area than it is on House Rock, but it is better than it is on the North Kaibab bison hunts. So bring uh, the tools, um, spare chains, toe straps, high lift jack, star wrench, and there is camping available on both wildlife areas. Um, again, just prepare as you would for any other hunt. Um, don't think it's necessarily just going to be an easy one morning, get it done type of deals. Just want you everybody to be prepared on it. So here's the Raymond Wildlife Area map. Um, likely, you'll, when you come in, here's our entrance road. Headquarters right down here. Um, there is a north fence, north south um, fence line running down this entrance road down to about here most likely the designated area is going to be over here on the eastern part of the wildlife area that's 7,000 plus acres that will be available um, where the bison will be during the, during the hunt um, you see all these green areas um, are the roads that are open and then, like I said, cross-country travel or anywhere, you know, wherever the harvest occurs, um, you'll be able to drive cross-country to pick up that animal. So here's the House Rock Wildlife Area. Um, this whole red outline is the whole of the wildlife area, some 54,000 uh, plus acres, 1,000 acres. And um, right up here in this northeast corner is where um, the animals will be um, on these early stages of this new wildlife area hunts on house rock wildlife area all right so scouting if you want to come up uh, scouting is encouraged prior to your hunt or come up a couple days early before your hunt so you know the designated uh, hunt area you learn the roads how to get around age and sex bison look at the animals that are there house rock wildlife are a great opportunity to watch the sunset over grand canyon and just a special note here, uh, Raymond is closed annually, um, at least in the short term, uh, from May 1 to July 29th each year. All right, you might get to see something spectacular over the Grand Canyon as this, or pictures with uh, bison, elk, antelope, uh, badgers on Ra house, or, or excuse me, Raymond Wildlife Area with the peaks in the background makes a good background. All right, so the day of the hunt, as I said, we'll meet at the Wildlife Ferry headquarters for a short briefing at 7 a.m. And then afterwards, you're on your own unless you want us to uh, come along with you. Like I said, there, there is the physical checkout of any harvested bison with the department representative. And um, we may go out in the field, too, after it and, and collect this information, too. It's kind of new for us, so we're, um, we'll be learning the uh, best way to implement these hunts this year, too. So what we expect is the hunters are expected to hunt as a team. For cow and yearling hunters, um, there's just two permits. The animals will be in one group, so hunting them together as a team um, will... It, hunting them separate is going to be harder to um, fill both, both tags. And then subsequently, the hunts behind you um, will be all the harder for them. So working together, um, you'll be more successful. So there are high points at Raymond Wildlife Area. And then at House Rock, you can use, um, there's roads throughout it. And I'll point those out here on the map where you can go to find animals um, where the herd may be. At Raymond, it's just to the east side of the headquarters. There's a high um, hill there up by the water tower that overlooks most all of the east side. Okay, there'll be up to 15 plus bison available in each hunt area. But once located, you know, take your time. You don't need to rush it. 
use the wind. They're not stupid animals. Um, they're just naive to hunters, um, to being hunted, but they will wise up quickly. So hunt them just like you would pronghorn antelope. They're gonna be out in the open country. Um, remain out of sight and downwind or they will run from you. Okay, like I said, they're not stupid. You need to hunt, hunt them smartly. Determine if you'll stalk on foot or if close to a road, you can drive out there cautiously. They are used to vehicles, but they're not used to people on foot and they will run. They're not as spooky as, as the bison up on the North Kaibab, um, but you can approach, as long as they see you, probably within 200 yards, you're, you're okay um, on foot. But anything closer than that, and a good chance they will run. So take your time, identify a legal animal. And then wait for once you get in um, for a good shot or close enough, um, wait for a legal animal to clear. Don't, don't, have, don't take a shot if there's bison in the background of the animal you want to harvest. Wait till it clears. Wait till it clears in the middle or off to the sides. Okay, so factors affecting the hunt success. Hunters not working together. There's only two hunters, as I said, on the designated cow and yearling hunts. Um, so working together is essential. We'll be working the same animals, so working together um, will ensure um, success for both hunters. So designated cows and yearlings that will be should be together in one group. We covered that. There's no need to take long shots. You should be able to shoot 200 yards or less. And if you get in too close, uh, probably within 100 yards, they are likely going to be um, running from you. Um, they're still um, wild animals, and um, they're just naive, but they can wise up quickly. So shot placement is extremely important, just like we go over on the North Kaibab, shooting a bison. Um, caliber choice is less important to um, shot placement. We recommend you bring some sort of a rest, too, with you. Okay, approaching animals in plain sight. Talked about this, but it's worth repeating. These bison are used to vehicles driving around, uh, whether that's department personnel or hunters on the wildlife area, but they're not used to people walking at them. So, shot placement. Here's a bison skeleton. What we recommend is a heart shot. The heart shoot sits low in the chest cavity of bison. So we'll go right behind that elbow. Uh, and the point of the elbow without hitting the shoulder. So we wanna go right behind that and get into the lungs or the heart. Um, the position of this front leg is gonna determine how available the access is to that heart. If it's forward, that's a great shot. Opens up the whole um, lungs and heart area. However, if it's back, down at a back angle, as much of it's covered. In fact, a lot of it's covered. I recommend waiting for a shot where it opens up um, as, as it is here or a leg forward shot. If you're gonna shoot, some people like to shoot and, and break down the, um, the front legs. You do that, you're gonna ruin a lot of meat in the process, but it's, it's your animal and you can um, shoot it um, however you like. So again, here's it is on the hoof. So that elbow is gonna be um, with all this hair and what they call shaps here, um, it's gonna be hard to distinguish. But if you look about six to eight inches up from the bottom of the chest, up right on that hairline, you're gonna get in there. If you're back even a couple inches in here, you're gonna hit the diaphragm the guts and they can um, go a long ways with that. If you hit them into this heart and lung area, they will not go very far. Okay, here it is on a cow. Much easier to see, not as much hair. You can see that point of that elbow right there, right behind that, right into the heart. Puts them down very quickly. Okay, so you've hit a bison. Now what? Um, so whether it is up or if it has um, gone down, 
it's likely the rest of the herd um, will surround um, it and stick around that animal. So do not shoot again unless you are positive which one you hit. With all that hair, especially in the wintertime, um, it absorbs um, any hit, any blood, and um, can be hard to see which one you, knew, which one you hit. Um, but if you're sure and it's still standing, I recommend um, put another one in there um, if there's a clear shot. Okay, so be patient. Let the other animals leave on their own. If the animal is still up, the one you hit is still up and wounded, um, it can run off or walk off with the herd and you may not get a shot. So be patient. Um, let the, let your, make your first shot count and let the damage that occurs take effect. And that animal will most likely be um, on the ground and the rest of the animals will walk away. Okay, if it is wounded, what we advise is let it walk off um, and follow it with optics. What is typical that we've seen on wounded bison? They will keep their rear end to you if you try to follow them from the back and try to come around on the side of them. They will, they will match your, um, your angle and, and walk away from you. Um, it's hard to get around on the side of them. So what do you do? Again, don't trail behind them. Um, they could also run, um, but work around in front. Use the roads of the wildlife fair to get around in front of them and come in um, that way. Um, there will be way less uh, spooky coming in the front, but they do, like, do not like people following from behind. And it's, it's really difficult to get a shot. Um, depending, I mean, a second or follow-up shot depending upon um, what that first shot did. Um, they may follow with the group of animals or they may veer, veer off by, them, by themselves. But it's best to not try to follow them from behind, come in from the front, and you'll have a much better um, opportunity to put that animal down. Once an animal is down, um, that's where the two hunters on the cow and yearling hunts can work together and um, allow that second, um, I think there's even one hunt with three yearling hunters. Um, now the herd is anchored there for a little while, um, allows for the second and possibly third hunter uh, an opportunity for the harvest as well. So like I said, um, here's the green, almost the whole periphery of the wildlife area on the east side. There's a road up here off on the uh, Hopi Three Canyon ranches, falls up along the, the northern perimeter in here to get access in here too. There is a road, just so you know, you can see that um, if you harvest an animal up here, there's a road along the fence line that comes up here from the entrance. Uh, up here falls all the way along that entrance. So you can get in out there um, to pick an animal up. If it's wounded, walk in any of these directions, just uh, realize you can, there's roads to get around in front of them. Okay, same thing in the uh, House Rock Wildlife Area hunts will be in this, what we call the Northeast Pasture, 4,000 acres. Um, there's a close up of that. Here's some open roads within that to get around. Um, this area in here, you can drive out there to retrieve an animal, uh, but there's no roads in between there. So after harvest care, so you got an animal down, then what? Um, but before we get there, I just want to show, show you um, some differences um, in photographing if you get an animal down. So these are some uh, hunters up on the north Kaibab. Look how they pose this animal, got it up on its sternum, uh, makes a nice uh, photo. Uh, here's another one, a little bit different angle. And then here's a yearling hunter up, a yearling uh, female yearling up on the North Kaibab as well, up on the sternum, makes a nice photograph. Just contrast that with that first photograph, uh, blood in the background. It's, it's, it's a once in a lifetime harvest. So it takes some time to make a nice picture on uh, House Rock Wildlife Area. You can get a, a background of the, of the Kaibab possibly in snow. On Raymond, uh, good chance there'll be snow on the peaks. Take a picture with that in the background, makes a nice, uh, memory um, of your hunt. All right, 
So plan ahead and know how you will handle the carcass. So determine how you're going to break it down. What are you going to do? You got it on the ground. Now what? Are you going to break it down in place? Or are you going to haul it off site? Uh, are you going to bring a trailer? Uh, bring with you knives, sharpeners, extra blades, rope, a come along or a winch to help get it into a vehicle or onto a trailer. If you're going to take it out whole. Uh, tarps to lay meat on and lay your equipment on. Game bags, ice chest, you know, plan ahead just like you will an elk hunt or a deer hunt. Uh, bring help with you. They'll, they're big animals once you get them on the ground. Um, even yearly, yearlings are about the size of a, of a um, actually can be bigger than a elk, uh, cow elk, um, and in the neighborhood of a 600 pounds. So good idea to contact your meat processor ahead of time. Some of these hunts in November will be during the late elk hunt. And some, con some meat processors turned hunters away last year because um, they just had so many animals. Um, might be the same this year. So just plan ahead with your meat processor. Let them know you're coming. And um, they'll save a spot for you. At least most of them will. All right. So once you get it on the ground... Um, yeah, you'll see, especially as a bull out on Raymond, uh, just how big they are. How are you going to work that animal? How are you going to process it? So what we recommend is doing what they call the gutless method. Just do it on ground. There's not trees. Um, difficult to get it up in the air. Um, anyway, with the small juniper trees that are there on the wildlife area, even if there was one by, um, so doing it on the ground or taking it out whole um, after it's gutted. Uh, is what most hunters will do. But here's just demonstrating some guys on the North Kaibab um, doing the gutless method. You skin out one side of it, flip the hide over, take the meat uh, quarters off the meat, flip it over and do the other same side. And you notice these guys got their work cut out for them because there's another one in the background waiting for them. All right, so other things that might be nice is a pop-up shade. Um, for protection from rain and snow if there's going to be weather. Um, this is on the North Kaibab. This is a summer hunt, so they had it for the shade protection. Um, you won't have a heat issue on um, November, December, February hunts at either wildlife area. But there may be weather. Um, be good to work out of the weather if, if there's going to be rain or snow. All right, just a note, remember to move all the edible portions if you're going to do that method. All right, another thing that people have done, uh, and I've seen it in the last 10 years, is they bring a tripod. Uh, they make a tripod out of pipe and lift it up in the air with a winch or a, a hoist. Um, this is an old photo, a department photo, in, I think it was in the 19, early 1960s. But you get the idea of that if you want to go that option. Haven't seen that in a while. All right, so let's get back to this bison hide. So what is this hide telling a story of? I just want to point out that the artist that did this for the department was Jan Taylor, very talented artist, and this was her concept. Once I told her what I wanted to do, she came up with this idea of how to display it without words. So this bull right here, big bull, you'll notice on the shoulder, she drew in uh, other outlines of bison on that shoulder. That represents the millions of bison that were in North America um, prior to uh, European settlement. So vibrant, healthy herds across much of uh, North America, northern Mexico, up in the Canada, Alaska. The skulls rising off the back of the bull represents the destruction starting around 1850s. Um, they were shot indiscriminately for several different reasons, um, but that was the death, that was the destruction from millions, possibly over 50 million head originally in North America. They were down to less than 1,000 and some estimates around 750 uh, total uh, wood and plains bison left. They're almost all wiped out. So what these animals up here represent is uh, two separate lineages. Most of them were round up. Um, that's these animals, and they were crossed with cattle. 
to make a hardier breed of livestock to withstand the extremes of um, weather um, back in the day. All right, and that's, that, this represents most of the animals um, who had been crossed, even on much of the, most of the animal bison on uh, National Park Service lands are um, crossed with cattle to some extent. But there was some that were never crossed. This is the lineage on top here, um, coming off of here. Um, these tracks represents the trail um, of those animals and where they went. These were not crossed with cattle. Down here, um, you'll see um, most of these animals that were crossed with cattle. That's the majority of the animals alive today, as I said. Um, but there were some that were not. That's these tracks. All right, so these two bulls down here represent what you think of this whole hide as, as North America where Arizona would be. These are Arizona's two herds. So this, this more um, one to the west represents House Rock Wildlife Area. The one over here represents uh, Raymond Wildlife Area. So you follow the tracks. So here's, here's some tracks, the lineage, coming around the House Rock Wildlife Area. That represents the Buffalo Jones, bringing them in in 1905, 1906. Um, you also have, uh, excuse me, we back up from that. That's the animals that are on House Rock Wildlife Area today, the ones that were not um, crossed, okay? Another one is coming across coming to house or to Raymond Wildlife Area here. That's the Wind Cave National Park animals, a lineage that has not had detectable levels of cattle DNA on them. That represents the current herd uh, with the Raymond Bison Conservation Herd. They are a satellite herd of Wind Cave National Park bison. Um, and about every 10 to 15 years, we'll exchange some animals um, to prevent inbreeding with them and with that lineage of bison. So these ones over here, we have coming out with the white tracks, crossed animals. Um, that was the original animals coming in and from Buffalo Jones. All right, those are the animals that have now found Grand Canyon National Park. Um, the other lineage coming in is the animals from um, American Prairie Reserve in Montana um, that also have no detectable levels of um, cattle DNA in them. These animals from American Prairie Reserve are descendant of the last bison, wild bison herds in the Montana Territory in the 1870s that were um, rounded up and they actually is long history, but they were sold to parks, uh, to the government of Canada, Elk Island, if you heard of them, and then they were transplanted back uh, animals um, back to uh, Montana, American Prairie Reserve. They also part of a, a Glacier National Park partnered with the Blackfeet Nation in Montana to jointly manage a herd of both um, uh, Glacier National Park where they summer and then on a winter on uh, Blackfeet Reservation on the east side of Glacier National Park. So same animals at House Rock Wildlife Area. All right, so, and conclusion this one to leave this up so you guys can see this again any questions you can contact any of us in these phone numbers um, house rock wildlife fairy hunters contact sam pogue uh, coordinate your hunt with him let him know when you're coming if you're coming on uh, opening day as i would recommend um, everybody do but sometimes there's other things that come in it's a five-day season if you're going to come in later let sam know so he can prepare for that same thing with Kenny Hot on Raymond Wildlife Area. Coordinate with him if you're going to come in on opening day or not. And then uh, if you have any questions, any the questions, you can also email us. All of us will get this um, at this bison hunt at azgfd.gov. So any questions, let us know. And I hope that uh, this presentation was helpful to you to understand um, the new changes. And uh, wish you all well. Thank you.